This video is from my Most Important Cloud Concepts collection. If you'd like to watch the full series where I describe all concepts in a single video, check out the link in the description. Okay, for this one, we're gonna talk about container orchestration. Okay, and just as a, as a very brief recap, I'm pretty sure like 90% of you probably know what containers are, but just to, to briefly cover this for people that don't, containers are, are kind of an isolated environment that you can create like on your home machine, for example, that has all your dependencies in it. So it has your code, it has your dependencies, it has all your configuration, you can bundle all of this stuff up on your home machine and then port this anywhere. You can host this application on the cloud. You can host this on your friend's computer. You can host this on um, maybe your work infrastructure. This is the idea with containers and they're, they're very convenient. They make it so that you know, if you ever had the works on my machine problem where you tried to run something and it works perfect on yours, but on your coworkers, it's like something's broken. And it's like the same code, you know, something's wrong here, obviously. Um, this solves that issue. And what container orchestration is, well, maybe it's useful to talk about um, the problem of not having cont container orchestration. So a lot of AWS providers offer you the ability to deploy your containers, right? So EC2 is a good service um, that allows you to do this. Uh, so EC2 is basically like rent a machine from AWS. And so what you can do as a user is you can you know, take your, your container from home and then deploy it onto your EC2 instance. And now like it starts receiving traffic and everything's going great, right? So this is like a very simple, trivial way that you can deploy your containers onto the cloud. Now the problem starts to, to creep up is uh, what if like this container starts to fail, right? Maybe it's got like some problem with it. Maybe it's uh, over overused or it's, its usage is, is really, really high or it's running out of memory in order to perform its function, or maybe it just shuts down for some inexplicable reason. You'd have to set up some process to monitor this and then kind of restart it over time, or you'd have to detect this and do it manually, which is a pain in the butt, something you don't necessarily want to deal with. Even the ability to deploy code, like to deploy code onto an EC2 machine for a container is kind of complicated and non-trivial. So what container orchestration allows you to do is basically simplify this process greatly. There's certain services in AWS. Uh, ECS is the most popular one. There's also EKS for Kubernetes, Elastic uh, Container Service and Elastic Kubernetes Service. And essentially what these two services, they're, they're two flavors of, the, of solving the same problem. What they allow you to do is say like, okay, you have a piece, you have a container that you develop and you want to host it on many different machines. So you can easily say, I want to deploy this onto three different machines uh, for the same code. And you can also provision a, a load balancer for it to start distributing traffic, which we talked about previously. Uh, you can also define health checks to kind of check on these instances and replace them if there's ever an outage. Uh, you can automatically get behavior like if this instance ever goes down, then and just remove it from the group. So traffic will only start flowing to the remain, remaining instances. There's also monitoring and uh, availability functions that you can use as part of these different services. They basically make it a lot easier to deploy container-based applications either for ad hoc one-time jobs or for services that are going to persist for a long period of time. So container orchestration services have become very, very popular because it makes your life easier. Um, but this is essentially the key idea of them and what you need to know about at a high level. Okay, let's move on now to the second concept. This one is in terms of 